going to start off by um, playing a, a short video that talks or that shows you what we're all about. It was for those who had money. We'll get back to that in a second. They also said we couldn't vote. Oh, did we change that? Next, they said school was not for girls. Boy, did she have something to say about that. So did she, and she, and she, and she, and a whole lot of she's. Remember when only certain people could afford a computer? What about now? Okay, back to travel, because they're at it again, saying flying is for the rich. Well, not if we can help it. Jet West. Now, everyone can fly. Um, I, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. It, it explains who we are, what we want to achieve, and what we truly believe. A few months ago, the global news network CNN did a story on Jet West, in which they said that we aspire to be the easy jet of Africa. Well, you know, that's, that's a nice aspiration, but we said no. We aspire to be, and we will be, the Jet West of Africa, the Jet West from Africa, and the Jet West for Africa. Our mission is crystal clear, and it's actually very simple. We will find ways to continually reduce the cost of air travel so that more people can fly. And we'll do this even though we live and work in a very high-cost environment. This is a mission that we embark on with an absolute sense of clarity and an absolute sense of certainty that we will and must succeed. But before I go any further, let me ask a question. Why has there been so many failures in Nigeria, particularly in aviation? Nigeria is a dream market after all. We have 170 million people who love to travel. I mean, we move about the country like there's nobody's business. We go to support people for weddings, for funerals, new babies, new cars, new jobs. We just love to go and support ourselves. We have no roads to speak of. Our roads are not in the greatest shape at the moment. And our rail lines are not really working very well. But I'll tell you this. Up until now, most airlines formed in Nigeria have been formed by people who just thought, you know what, I'll start an airline. It sounds pretty cool. What do you have? Oh, well, I have a car. Oh, well, I have four planes. You know, it sounds a lot cooler. So there was really... A, a lack of understanding, a lack of discipline, and a lack of governance in most airlines. The owners of these airlines formed the airlines in their image, so it was for them and their friends. Market research, market evaluation were not things that were done at a very high level. In fact, it was as though sometimes people put their fingers in their mouth, put it in the air and said, okay, which way is the wind blowing? Okay, you know what? Let's open the route to Douala. It sounds like a great plan. And Douala starts, and after a few months, you have to shut down because it doesn't make any sense. And most time, that happens way, it goes on for way too long. One more thing they also do is that they hire these amazing teams, and they don't let them do their work. And I speak from experience. But I won't go into that today. That's for another time. So now the question is, why would Jet West be any different from our predecessors? And I tell you, it all starts with our mentality. We have a laser-like laser focus on trying to achieve our goals. We have a pretty diverse team that vary from aviation to hospitality to retail and even Nollywood. But something that binds us all together is the fact that we believe that we have to create a better way for our people. We use things like technology and data and proper market evaluation to make our decisions. And one more thing is that we've accepted our reality. We know 
that we are in a high-cost environment. We understand that. But that, in and of itself, is not a roadblock that will stop us from achieving our goals. It is up to us to find ways to make our operations leaner, to make them highly productive and highly efficient. And we must do all of this while not compromising on the key elements of safety and quality because people's lives are at stake. But it is far deeper than this because at JetWest, we are playing the infinite game. We understand that this is a journey that won't happen overnight or in two years or in, in six years. It's a, it's a continuous struggle to find ways to reduce our cost. We are obsessed with changing transportation in Africa, starting with Nigeria. We are obsessed with growing the market so more people can fly. We are obsessed with building amazing partnerships with our partners and building amazing human beings that come through our systems. Funny enough, we are actually quite agnostic to competition. We don't worry about what anyone else is doing. We're focused on ourselves. We're focused on competing with ourselves to meet our goals. And we've done this, or we're doing this, and will do this using a value-based filter so that every single decision is put through this value-based decision meter that we have. Is it good for our movement? Is the person good enough or good for what we're trying to achieve? It's very painstaking. It, it requires lots and lots of money and lots and lots of time invested in training, in building people up to be better. We are not focused on absolutes. So you wouldn't hear us saying that in five years' time, we're going to have 60 aircraft, or in 10 years' time, we're going to have $20 million in revenue. That's not it for us. We're focused on building this thing one step at a time, one brick at a time, to achieve the ultimate goal, which we might never get to, which is reducing air travel as much as possible so that a lot more people can fly. We're not just simply trying to offer cheap affairs to African people. We're trying to get them to have much better lives. But before you dismiss this as grandstanding or hope talk, we've done this before. My partner and co-founder Tunde, who's here filming the front, and I met at a very promising carrier in Nigeria that has since fallen on very hard times. And when we got there in the fall, well, we don't have fall in Nigeria, in, um, in September of 2013, we just sat down like good managers and we said, let's watch and see how this, this airline works so we can understand better the issues at hand. We had come off a very stellar fourth quarter by that airline standards. We had eight aircraft. We flew 54 flights a day, which was about six hours of flying daily. We carried 90,000 passengers a month with revenues of about $11 million at the time, and our average fare back then was about $130. And we were coming off a stellar fourth quarter by that airline standards. And we were charged with figuring out ways to keep that level of revenue going. So we went off and we came back and said, we're going to put into place low-cost carrier principles. So in the, in the beginning, of low season from, April, from January to April of 2014, we increased flights. We went from 54 daily flights to 74 daily flights. We reduced our fares from $130 to $70. And what we saw over the next 120 days was purely magical. Our passenger numbers grew from 90,000 passengers a month to 200,000 passengers plus a month in low season. Our revenues grew from $11 million to $20 million a month, also in low season. These were all records at the time at the carry that we worked at. What gave us a lot of courage was when our cabin crew would come into the office and say, you can't believe it, today we had 10 people who couldn't even fasten their seatbelts because they had never flown before. And we knew at that time that we were onto something. Well, unfortunately for us, we had aircraft that were not as robust as they should be, and we had continuous breakdowns. And it was, it was rather unfortunate, and we had to throttle back a little bit to allow those aircraft 
basically catch up to what we were trying to do. But we learned a very key lesson in that. There's a myth in Nigeria that people don't like to fly at night because it's dangerous. Now, during those delays, we had flights that finished at 1 o'clock in the morning and sometimes 2 o'clock in the morning into cities like Kano, Abuja, Lagos, and Port Harcourt. And what we saw was almost a zero attrition rate. Nobody went home because the flight was delayed. They completed their flights, which means, and meant to us, as we built, built JetWest, that we could schedule flights way into the night in certain cities. Now, the pundits will tell you that the LCC model, as you have it in Europe or in America, will never work in Nigeria. And we say, yes, we do agree with you, because yes, we don't have secondary airports, nobody is going to negotiate a volume type of uh, arrangement with you and any airport. So what we did was we've taken the LCC model, as you know, in Europe, we've tropicalized it, we've Africanized it, and we've Nigerianized it to work in our environment. Then they go on to say, well, you know, Nigerians are aspirational people. I'm sorry I'm talking about Nigeria because that's where we're starting first, so I want to talk about them first. Nigerians are aspirational people. We would never, ever go for an unbundled product because we want it all in one price. Your food, your luggage, your this, your that, everything in one price. And we say again, yes, if you're speaking of the same 10 million people that travel every year. As you all know, over the last four years, we've been through some of the most difficult economic times in Nigerian history. But guess what? The numbers of people that flew did not dwindle. And so we asked the question, what about the 70 million people that traveled by road last year? Are they not aspirational as well? Who cares about them? Well, we do. We care about them, we feel their plight, and we heed their call for a better way of traveling. Technology is a massive part of our business and we've embraced it wholeheartedly. Everything, um, so let me just take a step back and say this. Now, Nigeria is a bit of a different market from quite, uh, quite many other countries in Sub-Saharan Africa in that we have probably the highest um, internet penetration rate in, on the continent. People use their phones today to do everything. From banking, I can't remember last time I went to my bank branch to do anything. From banking, to buying services, to paying for bills, it's all done online. In fact, the carrier that we once worked at, Tina I worked at, back, this was three and a half years ago, we sold 70% of our tickets online. So JetWest is taking the the grand step of saying that we're selling 100% of our tickets online and we're working with aggregators to make sure that people have access to our tickets. We're also using technology, technology to interact with our passengers. And we're doing that already. We've got a very strong social media presence so far. We're on, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, and also LinkedIn. In fact, we just finished the second round of our uniform contest, which we asked the public to help design the uniform for JetWest. We got over 1,000 entries, and at the close of voting on Sunday, we had over 30,000 votes cast for the people that people wanted to, to see win. Now, we understand that as a new entrant, we're not going to be a mass market appeal on day one. And so we're focusing our efforts right now on our innovators and our early adapters. And we're talking to them and we're interacting with them. The millennials, those young men and women are going to change the way that we see travel because they're going to start to influence their parents, influence their friends. And if they're already in a conversation with us at JetWest, we know and we hope that they will tell their families and friends that, you know, try JetWest. They seem pretty cool. They talk to us. They interact with us, and they get us involved in every single process that we, we do. JetWest is all about people, the people of JetWest. We understand that 
no matter what new aircraft we put in, uniforms we have, great ideas we have, without people, we cannot execute. Our people are critical to us. They are the real stars of our business. How we nurture them, how we build them to be better human beings, not just for Jet West, but for society at large, is a very, very critical and important part to what we're trying to achieve. We want them to be better human beings and better citizens of Africa. The expectations for Jet West at home are quite high, but we are up for it. We know that the challenges are going to be strong, but as the great Nelson Mandela once said, everything seems impossible until it's done. I hope that one day, if you guys are in Nigeria or West Africa in the near future, you'll get a chance to see what it is that we achieve. And with that, thank you very much, and God bless you.